All right, one more before bed. So unfortunately, I do have to go to bed now. I'm really bummed about it because I have no desire to. I so desperately want to watch the next episode. If I wouldn't have done reviews, I could have actually watched an entire other episode. Oh <sighs> Well, I do it for you guys, okay? I do it for you guys. So episode three. Now, I said in the last one that uh, we didn't get enough rows and spears and that I wanted to see more of them in this episode. Well, wish granted, this entire episode is Rose, Spears, and the other two guys. So there you go. You, you get what you want. Um, another fucking great episode. As I said, spoilers. Okay, let's talk. This is spoilers, obviously. So um, they're looking to go and find a hiding spot. We have this hooded, like, homeless-looking, whistling guy who's out there just without a care in the world. I don't know who the hell this guy is. And I'm pretty sure that's the same guy who shows up at the end here to save them. So uh, we get to see what his story is soon enough. Um, but he was in the first episode or the second episode or something. I think it was, yeah, the first episode. He's just walking by, whistling, like, like, oh, yeah, you know, fucking just nothing going on, nothing to see here. Um, so they hide out in this school and we see Spears is on the guy's shirt. So that clearly isn't his actual name because Spears is the guy who got killed. And although I don't think he's ever actually said his name is Spears, <laughs> um, I guess technically that segment could have been the guard Spears. Um, and so we'll find out what his actual name is here. But for now, his name is Spears because that's what it says on his shirt. And I don't know what the hell else to call him. So they see this kid in the halls after they, uh, kids in the hall, no, 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 not the Canadian freaking sketch comedy show. No, they see a kid out in the halls after they kind of get a little bit of rest, think they're going to haul up there, and if they see anybody, they decide they're going to leave. They see a kid, and uh, Rose wants to go save him. Spears is like, fuck no, that kid's probably bait. They should have listened to Spears. They all four would have lived. But because, you know, it's a kid, everyone wants to go after a kid and help him out. But, but Spears ain't having that shit. He wants to get out. And as I said, I mean, it kind of sucks because the lesson of these kinds of shows is don't do the right thing. The right thing is the wrong thing. You're going to get yourself killed. And so they run off to him and uh, they, uh, the deaf guy here... He finds the dead bodies and just takes off running, leaving Rose behind, which is kind of a dick move. Um, and then there are these creepy ass kid noises that are coming and she's searching for him. Um, and then we cut back to Spears and, and the other dude and he trips off a bomb or something that kills him. Or at least I think he was at least he was injured. I think he was killed. I don't know. We don't see him again. And then uh, Rose is heading off over to this crying child trying to be a mom. She is a mom. She's trying to be motherly to help this kid. And when she gets there, it is a loudspeaker. She has been duped and she's locked in this bathroom. And the kid immediately starts laughing like frantically. It is creepy as shit. And then we see the deaf guy who has been taken it. Or was it maybe it was the, the other guy that was blown up. Um, I think it was the deaf guy, but anyway, he's pulled into this freaking like Lord of the Flies collection of kid survivors and or predators. They are predators as we see, but we don't know what they've been through and what their goal is. I mean, maybe they're just, uh, you know, trying to defend their place, but they're being real sinister about it, laughing their asses off and luring people into places. So they're definitely exploiting the fact that they're children and that a lot of people would uh, would come to their rescue and let their guard down to do so. Um, and <clears throat> as I said, that whole shit with the kids is, is creepy, but then it gets really dark as well because then uh, there is going to be an exchange, the gun for the deaf guy. And they kick him over and he's deaf, so obviously he can't hear what's going on. And he's like, if he moves, shoot him. And it's his little kid he gives the gun to because he's like the one in the gang, I guess, that uh, has no conscience and will blow anyone away. He's too young to care, right? And so the deaf guy, not being able to hear it, just walks forward and she, Rose, yells out, no! And she fucking shoots him. And then the kids just take off running. 
and because they know. I mean, they've been in this long enough. Rose says something about like four to five weeks. So I think the six week time frame is about accurate of, of when this all started. Um, and yeah, the deaf guy turns like instantly, like within five seconds of being shot. I mean, it is such a fast transformation in this show. So clearly they've all been infected. Like in The Walking Dead, everyone's walking around infected. And if you die, you come back. Or it's not infected at all. It's just um, a curse. Who knows? But people instantly come back from the dead. Um, it's just a really sad sequence. It's just the kids and her fighting for the deaf guy's life and also fighting for the kid's life. Like, what are you going to do? Shoot these kids? Like, everything is just so dark in that moment when that kid shoots that guy it's just a really dark moment and then the kids are like you know um, egging it on and celebrating and cheering on the fight between the adults uh rose and and um <clears throat> spears there against the this deaf guy i think the deaf guy is uh freaking ryan right like i i don't know if we ever established that but he's dead now so i guess we'll never establish it unless i go back to the first episode and rewatch it Please, someone tell me. Um, and I thought he was mute, but he clearly isn't because when he's a zombie, he's yelling and making noise. So clearly his body has the ability to uh, to speak or make noise. So he's actually not mute from what I can tell there. They waste so many bullets on this guy. Like, seriously, can you fucking shoot his head, please? Um, and then, as I said, I think the Whistler saved them. So uh, I can't wait to get to that next episode. Um, I'm, I'll be very curious. I hope the next episode is more of uh, Son and William from episode two. I was missing them this episode. The fact that they're not in it all and that it specifically only sticks to these characters. I was a tad bummed out about that, but man, it was such a good episode anyways. I didn't care. The kid shit was creepy. The kid stuff was, you know, with the deaf guy, it was dark as fuck. Um, just an intense episode overall. Really enjoyed it. Super bummed I can't go watch another episode. Um, but I will I'll get back to this tomorrow. And I look forward to all your guys' comments in the morning. Hopefully some of you have watched it as like I did. And I, I can get some of your guys' thoughts and where you think this... I mean, I don't know what all there is to guess at the moment. I think they're all just trying to get to the stadium, right? That's the ultimate goal here. So um, I, I don't know what to expect. I, I think that uh, Rose, Spears, Son, and William will cross paths again eventually um, within a couple episodes. Or maybe not until the end, or maybe never, or I don't know. But uh, there's not a ton to guess here. I just am really curious on who this guy is who saved them at the end, or helped them out, or whatever he did. Um, so, we'll see. All right.